Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to look at how to price bonds in Excel, and I'll go over the basic mathematics of how to do this. And it turns out it's actually relatively simple to either get the price or get the yield to maturity, and it isn't actually that complicated when you really go through it and it becomes quite intuitive. Now I have a background in finance, with a PhD in finance, I've worked in various financial institutions, most recently I'm an angel investor. I've also taught various finance subjects at the university level, so know a little bit about how to make this relatively simple and straightforward. Now it would be great if you click the like and subscribe buttons, and if there's anything else you think about bonds, or you think about the pricing here, or anything else you think would be useful to cover, drop those in the comments below. We can start by just looking at the basic bond pricing formula, which I have up here. Now basically what the bond price contains is two overarching components. Firstly, we've got a component that represents the present value of all of the coupons you're going to receive. Secondly, we have a component that represents the present value of the face value for this bond. Now, when we're looking at the coupons here, what we do is we take the coupon per period, i.e. C here, and we multiply it by the annuity formula, which represents the present value of a periodic payment of that C amount of coupons for the requisite number of periods. Here, the number of periods is M multiplied by N, i.e. we've got N years and M periods per year. We're discounting these back at R, being the yield to maturity. This is otherwise known as the required rate of return on the bonds. I'm generally going to refer to this as the yield to maturity. Oft times you need to generate what that yield to maturity is by observing other bonds in the market, and you would need to actually reverse engineer what that yield to maturity might be. In this final component, we have the face value. The face value is typically given to you. Here is basically going to be the face value of the bond. Often this is just a round number, like $1,000 or thereabouts. This of course is discounted back at the yield to maturity and discounted back the requisite number of periods. Here, N multiplied by M. So it's relatively easy to go through and do this calculation. Now I'm going to do this in Excel and you'll see that it's actually relatively straightforward and just becomes plugging numbers into the formula. The only layer of complexity really comes up when you try to find the yield to maturity, or R here, which you'd need to get by using something like Excel Solver. You can see this in a very basic example here. So suppose we've got this situation where we're given some information about a bond. So it will have a $1,000 face value, which is relatively standard, five years until maturity, semi-annual coupons, which means we have two coupons per year, a coupon rate of 7%, which means we've got a 3.5% coupon every period, or every six months here, and a discount rate of 6%, which is going to be our yield to maturity that we'll use to calculate the present value of our bond's cash flows. Now what you can immediately see here is this bond is going to trade at a premium. So when we've got a bond trading at a premium, we can draw up a basic timeline here, where we've got time on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. Now, when you've got a bond trading at par, that would occur when the coupon rate is equal to the yield to maturity. The price for the bond trading at a par is going to remain constant throughout the life of that bond, assuming, of course, the yield to maturity remains constant. When we've got a bond that trades at a premium, we'll start off with a relatively high price, and then the extent or magnitude of this premium will start to scale down as we get closer and closer to maturity. Here, because we've got five years to maturity, there will be quite a large amount of premium here. So we can leap into Excel and see how we'd go and calculate that bond's pricing here. With this example in mind, we can start pricing the bond. So you've been given all the details you need. So you know that the face value here is $1,000 per bond. We've got five years until maturity. We have semi-annual coupons, which means there's two coupons per year. You're told that the coupon rate is equal to 7%, meaning the bond is trading at a premium when we've got a yield to maturity or a discount rate of 6%. So we can then start to use our bond pricing formula here. So let's first get the present value of the coupons. And this is going to be relatively easy because we're going to be able to use our coupon pricing formula here to get that present value. So what we'll do here is we first need to calculate the coupon per period. That's going to be seven months divided by two because we've got semi-annual coupons. And then we multiply, of course, this by the face value, which is going to give us our coupon per period. 
obviously make sure you've got the correct parentheses in this case. We then need to multiply it through by the annuity formula. Now the annuity formula here takes on its numerator one minus one plus the yield to maturity, which is in this case 6%, and we need to divide through by the number of periods, which is two here. Then we take that all to the power of, in this case, minus n by m, which is minus two by five here. So we've got 10 total periods in this case. So that's on our numerator. We then divide that through by our denominator, which in this case is our yield to maturity, 6%, divided through by the number of periods being two. We then need to make sure our parentheses balance, and this should give us a present value of our coupons. We can then get the present value of the face value, which is just discounting back that face value to its present value using the yield to maturity. So here we take our $1,000 face value. We divide through by one plus, again here the yield to maturity of 6%, divided through by the number of periods per year. We then take this all to the power of the number of total periods. So here that's two multiplied by five. So 10 total periods in this case as well. And this will give us a present value of the coupons or in the, of the face value. We can then get our total present value. And this is going to give us our total bond price. So here, our total present value is $1,042.65. So that's a relatively straightforward way to get our bond pricing here. And you can see what would happen if we change the periodicity. So here we have two coupons, but say you move it up to four coupons, we can see what happens. There's a subtle change. If you move it down to one coupon, again, there's a subtle change in all of these calculations. Regardless, we're able to change our numbers here in order for us to get the new price of our bond. It's relatively straightforward. Another scenario that might come up is having to determine the yield to maturity. This sometimes arises if you're given a whole lot of information and you can observe the price of the bond, but you need to calculate the yield to maturity for whatever reason. So one scenario where this might come up is if, for example, you have a bond that you want to price and you need to calculate the cost of capital, you might calculate the cost of capital by observing other bonds that are trading in the market. And then you might apply that cost of capital to the bond that you in turn want to price. In any case, you might want to obtain this cost of capital for any number of reasons. And we're going to go through how to determine this using Excel Solver. And it turns out it's relatively straightforward. So again, in this case, suppose we've got a thousand dollar face value, five years until maturity, semi-annual coupons, a coupon rate of 7%, and suppose for the sake of argument, our price we observe to be $1,065. We can then calculate our yield to maturity. So in order to start doing this, we need to put in a dummy yield to maturity. So I'm just going to put for the sake of argument, 6%. We're going to alter this later on to make sure that the price we calculate equals this price we observe, but we need a dummy yield to maturity just to start with and then we're going to alter it using Excel Solver. We can, can calculate our present value of our coupons using the formula from before. So just to reiterate, what we do here is we take our coupon rate, we divide our coupon rate by two to give us 3.5% per period, and then we multiply it by the face value to get our coupon per period. We of course need to make sure our parentheses balance. Of course, if we don't, we're going to get the wrong answer. We then of course need to multiply this by the annuity formula. So in our numerator again, we've got one minus, here one plus the yield to maturity. So here it's our dummy yield to maturity of 6%, divided through by two periods. And then this is all to the power of minus n by m, i.e. two periods multiplied by five years. We then need to close our parentheses for our numerator. We then divide through by, in this case, our yield to maturity, 6%, our dummy yield to maturity, over two, being the number of periods, and this is then ultimately going to give us our present value of our coupons. You'll notice, of course, it is the same as we had before. We then have to calculate the present value of our face value by taking the face value and discounting it back to the present value using the yield to maturity. So we divide our face value by one plus the yield to maturity of 6%, divided through by the number of periods being two periods, and then we need to take this to the power of the total number of periods. So here that's going to be 10, i.e. five multiplied by two. And then this will give us the present value of our face value. Again, this is the same basic logic as before. We then sum these to get our total value of our bond. Here you'll observe it's 1,042 
which is obviously not equal to 1065. So what we can then start doing is using Solver to make sure that we set this total value equal to 1065 by changing the yield to maturity. So to do this, what you do is you go to the Data tab in Excel. You then click Solver, and then this will bring up Excel Solver. If you do not observe Solver, you're going to need to go to File, then Options, and then go to Add-ins. However, I've got Solver pre-installed here. So in order to do this, what I need to do is I need to set the objective. So here, my objective is setting the total value. I need to set that equal to a value of, in this case, 1065. And then I need to do this by changing the yield to maturity solve, 6% here. And then I'm going to click Solve, and this is going to cause Excel to come up with a solution for me. So here my solution is a yield to maturity of approximately 5%. But you'll notice that Excel has rounded this. So it's about 5.4955%, i.e. much lower than the coupon rate here. This gives you a general rule of thumb, of course, that if the bond is trading at a premium, i.e. the price is above the face value, then in that case, that would imply the yield to maturity is below the coupon rate. What do you do if you can't find Excel Solver? Well, in that case, you go to File, then you need to go down to More or Options, depending on what it looks like in your Excel. Then after you've done that, you click on More, then click on Options. This is going to bring up an Options dialog. Then you'll go down to Add-ins, and then when you click on Add-ins, you'll find Manage Add-ins down here. And you've got various different types of add-ins you can manage. Then you click Go, and then you'll be able to select the add-ins you want. As you can tell, I've already selected the Solver add-in, but if you don't have it installed, you'll click this checkbox and then click OK. Obviously, because I've got it installed, I'll just cancel out of this. So that's how you would price a bond in Excel, and how you would also calculate the yield to maturity of a bond if you've been given the price and the other inputs. So it's a relatively straightforward process once you know what you are doing, and Excel has all the tools that you need in order for you to be able to do that bond pricing exercise or that yield to maturity or discount rate calculation exercise. So I hope this video has been informative to you. I hope it's given you a good idea about how to price bonds and how to just generally calculate things involving fixed income instruments. If you find the video useful or interesting, it would be brilliant if you click the like button and it would be great if you subscribe to get other videos of this type. Otherwise, if you have any thoughts about bond pricing in general or about any other things in finance that might be useful to cover, drop those in the comments below. In any case, I hope to see you for future videos and all the very best with your bond pricing exercises. Bye.